Welcome to Encounters. I'm Deborah Baird, and I am just so happy to be back in the studio today with two awesome ladies that are friends of mine. And um, I just, uh, before we get started in the Word, uh, I want you to introduce yourselves and share a little bit about your ministries and what you do. Sister Lois Collier. I'm Lois Collier. I go to Three Oaks Church with the mission for Living to Go. I have a heart for hurting women. Uh, and in order to be able to minister better, I have continued my education in the Word, and I am a licensed, ordained minister. I am a part of Vessels of Honor, and I consider that an honor because we touch so many women's lives. Amen. Belinda. I'm Belinda D'Angelo. Uh, my husband and I, Guy D'Angelo, have a ministry called Word Beat Ministries. Um, we minister in the Word and in music. Guy's a, a wonderful, talented musician, yes. gifted. Um, the Lord just uh, uses him on the drums to, mm -hmm. to minister uh, awesomely. Um, we do videos, and we are willing to go to any place to minister that God calls Amen. us to that opens the doors. Um, our, if anybody would like to, our website is wordbeatministries.org. Um, we live in Chapel Hill, Tennessee. We go to a church in Lewisburg. Um, so I don't God, know what else God's to say. Just, you know, God's just using you is what it is. Mm -hmm. You know, I believe God prepares us. Sometimes we have a, a season where we have to sit and he refills us, so to speak. Right. Yeah. And um, uh, we gain more strength because sometimes we just grow weary, don't we, when we're doing we do. so much. Right. And then there comes a time, and I've been there, and I'm sure you ladies have been there, where you have to rest in him. And you just let him pour into you because when you pour out so much sometimes, right. you forget that you've got to be poured back into. Amen? That's true. Yes. So, yes. I mean, that's, that's the great thing about uh, God. He, he loves to fill, continually fill us because those living waters, um, it just rises up. And yes. I, I love the, the peace of mind that God gives me when sometimes I grow weary. But right. uh, all I have to do is call on his name and... and Bam, he's there. I mean, you know, yeah, with the faithful. peace and the joy. Yeah. He's so faithful. <laughs> right. Well, today we are going to be studying on 10 reasons to read God's Word. How many of you know today that reading God's Word is so vitally important? Where This is our lifeline. You know, um, this is God's Word. And this is what he wants us to be doing, just studying his Word. It says to meditate on his Word daily. Right. And we're going to go over some of these things. We have 10 scriptures that we're going to try to cover uh, in the time that we have. And our first scripture, if you've got a pen and paper, take notes and, uh, and you can follow along or you just come back and watch the program later. Our first scripture will be found in Psalms 119 and 133. Order my steps in thy word, and let not any iniquity have dominion over me. Now, Sister Belinda, what do you think that's saying? I mean, it's pretty plainly spoken, but... <laughs> right. Um, I'm, I think it's saying that if we, if we were, will trust in the word of God, we have to be in God's word exactly. and trust in the word of God. Mm -hmm. um, well, the word of God is, is our shield. Is, yes. Is, it, it, yes. It protects us from from the iniquity that's out in the world or the iniquity that tries to um, attach itself to us. Right, and, and so many times we uh, we forget that the answer to all life's problem is in His Word. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And uh, like you say, we've got to trust in His Word. Uh, Any time that I have an issue come up in my life or someone comes to me with advice, uh, not advice, but wants advice, uh, they'll ask me, and I say, well, all I... What I tell them is all I can do is give you the Word, right. what the Word of God says. So if I'm not in the Word of God, I can't give them the answer. I, you know, I can give them what Deborah thinks. Right. But, you know, that uh, doesn't ma really matter a hill be to the hill beans. You know, it's just uh, what God's Word is so very important. This is what guides us. This is what uh, nourishes us. I mean, it's, it's our vitamins, so to speak. Yeah. Amen. Let's go to uh, Psalms 19 and 7. Sister Belinda, when you get to that, will you read that? Sure. Read that, please. I'm so thankful that I have his word today. Mm -hmm. You know, well, there may come a time when we can't literally have this Bible, but if right. we're in it today, right. it's a treasure in our heart. Right. The Holy Spirit will bring remembrance. Amen? R Amen. The law of the Lord is perfect, converting the soul. The testimony of the Lord is sure, making wise the simple. Amen. 
So basically, my, my, my thinking is that if we're studying this and we don't know much of the Word, if we pray beforehand, it's, he's gonna, His Word will make us wise. Right. I mean, the, to have wisdom of His Word. There's uh, too many times you see others uh, try to find a loophole, so to speak. Yeah, right. You know, yeah. that, they'll read a scripture and they'll say, oh, you got to read in between. That's not what that means, what you're saying. Or uh, uh, that's, uh, you're just really not seeing that in the supernatural. Well, I mean, God's word is just exactly what he meant it to say. Yes. Don't you think it, yes. Lois? Yes. <laughs> Praise yes. God. And you have to read it in the context. Amen. Pick it out. Right. Amen. It's not Amen. a salad bar you can pick no, and choose. <laughs> so, right. yeah, you know, because when we go to the salad bar to uh, say, oh, you eat salad bar, um, you pick things, you know, oh, I don't like that. I'll skip over that. But mm. God's word, it's meant for us to uh, be assured and to uh, follow each and every. Um, people like to do the thou shalt, you yeah. know, the ones they like. Right. But when it comes to the thou shalt not, you know, let's kind of, you know, skip over that real quick. You know, I've. I've uh, heard ministers before, and it's not uh, that I'm saying uh, they're wrong to a certain point. It's just uh, they don't, they're afraid of offending people. Yeah. And they'll be reading a scripture, and they'll read quickly over it, you know, skip. And mm -hmm. um, But when, when you're ministering, we've got to minister the full gospel. The full word um, of God. It, how else are people going to learn what the Word of God says, who they are, and who they can be? Yeah. Exactly. Just this morning on the way down here. I was just praying over and over, Lord, please let me see others through your eyes. Because yeah. sometimes our flesh, you know, um, wants to see people through the car carnality, right. you know, yeah. what's visible before you. But you don't, when someone's hurting, uh, you, the saying, you know, hurt people, hurt people. Exactly. Right. And uh, you don't know what that person has experienced that day. You don't know what uh, has happened in their life, and they're having a hard time letting things go. Right. So in studying His Word and reading His Word daily, it helps us grow in Him spiritually, I believe. Don't you? Right. And, yes. and just like we were reading in, in Psalms 119, 133, mm -hmm. um, whenever you do read the Word, it brings conviction, you know, oh, yes. and cleansing. Yes. And, and, to, and to get those things out. I can remember whenever I first became a Christian and I was reading the Word of God and I was really, really hungry for the Word, mm -hmm. you know, and I was reading it, but then I would read something that I didn't like and I was like, oh, so, you know, I kind of skip over mm -hmm. that until I grew a little bit more in the Lord, until He delivered me a little bit more, yes. you know, and I was able to handle that, that portion of that. Right. And it, you know, um, so it does, it, it brings conviction, change, it changes your character. Oh, yes. yeah. you, it makes you become Become more like the character of God. Is is what His, that's His heart. That's what He yes. wants us to be. Well, the more we read His Word, we will grow, and we we'll want our desire will be to go from the milk of the Word to the meat of exactly. the Word. You know, I, I you, we see all these devotionals, and all of them are good, uh, but there comes a point in time that you want more than the uh, feel good stuff. You know, yes. you, you want the meat. The very marrow of the word. Amen. Right. Amen. Amen. The word of God is a mentor. Yes. And a, a mentor is to correct and encourage, and that's what it does. Right, right. Yeah. And we've got to be willing to accept it. That's how I can tell when someone is growing, when they receive a word of correction with joy, because right. you can tell they're growing. Mm -hmm. Hey, I've been there many times, and I'll probably be there many more. So uh, I just um, I thank God for what he's doing in my life. And I thank God for what he's going to do in my life right. because there's many things that God wants for us to, you know, to have to happen in our life. Right. To walk in the spirit, to walk in the truth. Amen. Amen. And have you noticed, um, I can remember too as a young Christian, I thought I'd grown as far as I could go. But then <laughs> the yeah. more I learn, the more I realize I don't know. Yeah. You know, and the more oh, yes, I want to yes, know, yes, I yes. want to you know. So. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Well, let's turn to, uh, Lois, will you read the next scripture in Joshua 1 and 8 and read that, please? I don't know where I'd be without his word, I tell you. Amen. The book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate in it day and night, that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. Amen. 
success. So uh, that's a key to success in real life. Right. This word. Right. To study it. <clears throat> and like I said earlier, it said to meditate daily mm -hmm. upon his word. And it says here, you will make your way prosperous. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's really in our hands. And what I we don't, do with it. This is not about a big bank account, yeah, but yeah. my soul will prosper mm -hmm when I get in his word and I meditate. Meditate is to just kind of dwell on and just kind of think about it mm -hmm. a lot. And of course y'all know I'm a word person, so yeah. I start researching words and and uh, it becomes alive to right. you when right. you do that. Right, amen. Well, how else can we know? You know, when I'm battling sickness or different things, I get into word. When I'm feeling stressed out, I get into the word. When someone calls and say, hi, hey, I need prayer, I get into the Word. I pray, yes, but I get into the Word as well. And uh, the Word is my lifeline. Uh, that's the reason I try to study it as, as much as possible right. because right. I want it in my heart. Right, and it says in Psalms 107 that He sent His Word to heal us. Yes. Yeah. You know. Uh, and, you know, that's a very scripture to give someone you know, that wants to receive healing in their body, right. you know, to... Uh, your, the word was sent to heal. You know, I know Jesus died on the cross for all our sins, our sorrows, right. sickness, diseases, but he, he is the word. God is the yes, word. Is. Right. Amen. This is our sword. This is our battle. And I may be getting ahead of myself here. <laughs> but let's turn back to Psalms 119 and 9. I know I'm going over a lot of scriptures here, but I want to try to get through them as best as possible. Psalms 119 and 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereto according to thy word. Again, we've got to take heed. We've got to take into account the word. We've got to be in the word and obey the word. Obedience to his right. word. It's a right. big thing. It is. And I, I know we, uh, it says um, to fear the Lord's beginning of wisdom. And it's talking, it's, it's talking about a different kind of fear, a reverence fear, right. a yes. reverent fear. It's not talking about being afraid of what he's going to do to you. Right. And so many times uh, people are thinking you know, it's a, you know, a bodily fear, but it's a reverence fear. It even refers in the New Testament that we are washed with the Word. Yeah. Right. Oh, that's good. Exactly. And cleansed with the Word. Yes. Right. Uh, because it does reveal those mm -hmm. things that shouldn't be there. Amen. Amen. Praise Amen. God. Yes, it's a great feeling. You know, he'll manifest things through right. his word. Yeah. Through, through different things. I know we all said this before. We can read a scripture for years then one day sit down and read the same scripture and it's just like, why did I not see that before? Right. And, you know, it's because um, God was ready for us to see it on a deep, deeper level. Right, right. And uh, we are at a point in time, season in our life so that uh, we can use it in our life and can use it to help others. The whole Bible is a revelation. Mm -hmm. But I think at times what you're referring to is, you know, the Word becomes illuminated. Mm -hmm. The light shines on it. We see it in a different way mm -hmm. because we needed it at that time. Yes. I maybe didn't need it when I read it before. Mm -hmm. I was just reading it Amen. for the sake of reading it. But when it becomes illuminated to us, that's when it becomes alive. Right. And it yeah. gets inside. I think that we've all had those um, times when we've gotten to the Word and it just seems like that scripture just kind of jumps out at uh -huh. you, mm -hmm. you yeah. know, and, become, and becomes life to you. Amen, you amen. Know. I believe that. You know, yeah. what about those that says they just cannot understand the Word when they read? What do you think? I think that, I'm sorry, go ahead. Go ahead. I think you have to pray. Yeah. Right, exactly. Yeah. And ask God, God to show you what He means. I think that's why we need to learn how to cross-reference and and other translations, mm -hmm. but I think that's also why we have teachers in our lives. Exactly. You exactly. know, I've had people say, well, the Holy Ghost is my teacher, and that's true. It is true. But if that were the, all we needed, mm -hmm. we wouldn't have churches, we wouldn't have <laughs> pastors and teachers. That's right, amen. And the Bible talks about the fivefold ministry, right. so right. that's, if you don't understand, then you, you do research, and if you still don't understand, you ask for godly counsel. Well, yes. What does this mean? Keyword, godly counsel. Right. Godly, yes. Yeah, you just don't go about asking anyone, you know, someone that's not in the Word a lot. Uh, it's just like the saying, you don't ask someone for a, 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 about marriage counseling that's been married eight times because, right. I mean, you know, you go to godly counsel. Someone exactly. That's, someone that's been married for you know, years and years and years. And they'll tell you uh, that, you know, if you haven't had an argument or two, 
uh, something's wrong. Um, don't tell me yeah. you haven't had an argument. See, people like to put on a good impression. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but see, God knows it all. Through his word, he reveals it all. Right, and the, you're not going to be able to minister unless you can get real. Right, you yeah, know. getting real, that's true. I mean, so. just, it's just life. You know, life happens. Right. Sometimes we blame, uh, uh, don't take me wrong in this way, but sometimes we blame things on the devil that it wasn't the devil's fault. Right. It's just Absolutely. life. It's right. just life. Right. <laughs> Absolutely. Well, the Word says it rains on the just as well as the unjust. Amen. And that we suffer the same things that our brothers in the world do. And it's how we handle it yes. that sets us apart. And, yes, how we That's respond true. to things. God is teaching me uh, that just very um, particular about it because in my prayer time, you know, I was seeking the Lord over something recently and um, he was teaching me it's how I respond to it, right. how uh, how things will turn out. Exactly. See, uh, someone can, what does the Word of God say? A soft answer turneth away wrath? Right. Yes. So we can do those things. Uh, we have the power of his words and when we speak them through these lips of clay, uh, flesh, when we speak his word, it becomes alive and it goes into the supernatural realm. I totally believe that. We talked about that at the retreat this yes. past week, how important our words are. Yes. And we quote it all the time, death and life are in the power of the tongue. That's right. What are you speaking over your circumstance? Right. Are you speaking death or are you speaking life? Yes. You know, something can be, I can be praying one minute and just pumped up and we see this a lot. You know, um, as long as someone is in a, a, a service that's just really pumped up, everything's good, their emotions are high, oh, they're, you know, God's good, God's great. But as soon as they walk out the door and something hits and a negative word pops out of their mouth, it's so easy. It is. If we're honest, we've all been there. Right. Yes. And uh, it's so easy without even thinking. And we were all at the, uh, this retreat catching ourselves after the services. We right. were trying to watch ourselves. And, and you would be amazed at the negative things that you were saying. What most people wouldn't call negative, but the way God was convicting us, um, it was negative. Right. Because uh, the power in the Word, but the power behind it is yes. what we were trying to learn and what we were trying to teach. Amen. So many times, um, instead of allowing the Word of God to direct our path, we let our emotions direct mm -hmm. our path. And our emotions are deceiving and they will lie to us. Amen. So that's why that's why um, it's it's so important to put the word in your heart. Can I share? Sure. Um, <clears throat> you know that my first husband he passed away from cancer, mm -hmm. but I can remember when he was actively dying, how the word of God just poured out of me. You know, and mm -hmm. what a comfort it was. And I know because it was pouring out of me almost verbatim. Oh, wow. You know, like I couldn't I couldn't just sit and do it. You know, just just a like it poured out of me at that time, uh, it was the Holy Spirit. Uh, but it wouldn't have done that if I had not put it in there. Right, you know? right. And it, it brought comfort to me, and it brought comfort to my husband as he was passing away. Praise God. You know? Praise God. So, and that's, that's the way the Holy Spirit works in right. us. You know, some things uh, you think uh, you don't even remember until the Holy Spirit pours it out of you. Right. Uh, I remember uh, Margaret Bomar, one of my mentors. Oh, yeah. You know, when she was in ho hospice, that night that I had stayed with her, she woke up and she patted the side of the bed and she said, come here, Deborah. She goes, I've got to share with you. That woman was on her deathbed and she poured into me and she said, this will happen. You know, this will happen. This is what God's word says to how to handle this. You know, this, you know, I mean, she just like lined it up one, two, three and all those things I have experienced That's and had awesome. it not been for her pouring that into me. And as those things happen, the Holy Spirit just pulled it out of me, the remembrance of it, and then you know, and, and I, you know, just verbally placed it, I spoke it into existence, right. and and got into the Word and spoke that over my circumstance, and that's how powerful a mentor can be in your life yes. because they can speak a word. Uh, she used she used to love to say, uh, enlarge your, uh, well your your. Your, your tent or your uh, sphere, whatever. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, I, I, I've seen that in the Word of God, you know, enlarging your borders. But she was very meticulous on uh, you know, saying that. And thank God for mentors. You need to find yes. a mentor. All of right. us need yes. a mentor in life. Yes. I Absolutely. believe that. Had, had it not been for her, she had mentored so many people. And many of you may be watching this may, may have known her. She was a wonderful woman of God. Yes. Amen. Amen. Well, let's go to... Uh, to well, let's turn to uh, Psalms 19 and 8 and read that, please. Okay. I know this is a lot of word, 
but I feel that we need to get into practice the reading of God's Word. Amen. 19 and 8. The statutes of the Lord are right, rejoicing the heart. The commandment of the Lord is pure, enlightening the eyes. Praise God. It's pure. It's pure. It's not tainted. It's not got a man's opinion in it. It's, it's God's uh, inspired word. Mm -hmm. We can buy books today that are very inspiring. Right. But along with that, you know, there's man's opinion and things. And, uh, you know, I've been uh, mentoring uh, someone recently that uh, what does the word of God say? They'll come to me and say, well, have you ever seen this happen? Or uh, should I do this? And, you know, I would say, what does the Word of God say? I always come back, what does the Word right. of God say? And I'll say, are you reading God's Word? Yes, ma'am. I say, okay, what does the Word of God say? You implement what God's Word right. says. The, the Word of God can, uh, can bring strength. Like we said earlier, can bring healing, right. can bring joy. Uh, it, the Word of God says the battle's not ours, it's His. Right, right. But how many times do you and I try to fight the battle on our own? That's Even though true. it says it's His. Amen? That's true. Yes. So we just got to literally take His Word. There's one uh, uh, scripture in 119, 165. Lois, if you will read that, please. And uh, I really love this one. I have the scriptures you know, written down, but they're a different version. Psalms 119 and 165. Great peace have those who love your law, and nothing causes them to stumble. Nothing. Because the Word says that His Word is a light unto our Amen. feet. Amen. Amen. And I, I read somewhere where somebody used the illustration of a flashlight, uh -huh. and they said, when you're walking down a dark path, you don't shine uh -huh. the flashlight out in the trees. You shine it down on the ground where uh -huh. your feet are. And sometimes we don't know what's going to happen tomorrow mm -hmm. because He's just dealing with us today. Right. And, and His Word... It keeps us on track. Yes. And it will keep you from stumbling because when you're tempted, that word will pop in your head. Mm -hmm. The Holy Spirit brings to our remembrance what we've put in. Yes. And it'll quicken you mm -hmm. or as a Christianese word, but it'll cause you to stop and mm -hmm. think before you do something or say something. Right. And, and I've learned it myself because I've got the gift of gab that I pray <laughs> more. Teach me to be quiet mm -hmm. when I need to be quiet. Right. And when I speak, let me speak with wisdom. And if you pray that, He will stop you before you oh, say yes. stuff. Yes, yes, uh, you know, uh, The Lord often has me just to sit and listen uh, right. and not partake in any conversations. Because He showed me one, one time that if you will just sit and listen, you will hear, you'll, you will know what's coming from people's hearts. Right. Absolutely. That's if you true. sit and listen. Yes. And doesn't the Word say that? Yes. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. That's right. Yes. So it, in my thinking, so if we're in the Word of God, and if we're in the Word of God daily, and we're studying and seeking His face, guess what's going to come out of your heart? Right. The Word. The Word. Well, it right. tells us in Corinthians that we have the mind of Christ. Amen. That's right. So I should be thinking like Him. That's right. right. Exactly. But then my flesh rises up and it wants to think for itself. <laughs> right. Yes. Yeah. I started to say, what would Jesus do? But I thought I was being a little bit cliche. Well, I was thinking that. You know, <laughs> yeah. But I love, right. it. I love that. Because I do too. what would he do? Exactly. And uh -huh. if you stop yeah. and think, you know, and people had that slogan and they wore bracelets and All they the didn't even yeah. know him. You right. Know? right. But, but I, as a Christian, I think we do have to stop and think, what would he do in right. this situation? Right. What would he mm -hmm. say? Because we are the Jesus that other people see. Yes. Exactly. You know? we're, sometimes we're the only light. Right. There's a saying that uh, you, you can minister uh, and when need, speak. You, in other words, you, you're the living example. You're the living epistle. Uh, you, can, you can minister with your life. You don't even have to say a word sometimes. That's right. right? But just minister with your life. People will see how, how you handle circumstances and how you respond to things in life. And they think, you know, I've heard people say, I wish I could do what they do. Well, you, you, you know, no. Because you don't know what they've been through to get them to exactly. that point. Right. Every, one of had, every one of us has our own uh, things in life that we have to process and we have to deal with. And how we respond to it 
right. makes a world of difference. I'm going to read these couple more scriptures that I've got here on the paper um, to, uh, to distinguish good from evil. This is one of the reasons to read God's Word, to distinguish good from evil. How can you know what is right and what is wrong without His Word? That's uh, basically what it's saying in 119 and 11. So that scripture is in 119.11. I don't know what version this is. I, I just printed this off, the first version I had. Lois has already you got brought it. that verse yeah. out. <laughs> the word, not, your word I have hidden in my heart that mm -hmm. I might not, not sin, sin against, against you. Amen. No, you, you did a lot. I'm sorry. Amen. Right. Amen. Yeah. Have hidden in your heart. Right. But if even though it's hidden in our heart, uh, it shines before others. Yes. It, it, it does. It shines before others. You know, and that's, um, we know that, that, that Jesus is the living Word of God. Mm -hmm. And if you have Jesus, you have the living Word of God living on the inside of you, yes. mm -hmm. you know. Yes. And the Word of God is anointed in itself. You know, and sometimes yes. if you don't know what to say, you know, or whatever, just open up the Word and start mm -hmm. reading it, right. you know. And it's anointed and, and he's going to reveal. Mist. He right. will reveal. Amen. And if, I found that if you're struggling with something, you go to the concordance uh -huh, uh -huh. and you find what you right. need and you study yeah. those scriptures. Right. Don't Search read over out. there in Leviticus about the feast if you're battling right. stress. Or right. 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 You know. right. Because it, uh, you know, or the baguettes, you know, the yeah, people right. read the baguettes. Yeah. I just cannot read this word. You know, I've heard people say that. But I'm just going to go briefly over these. Um, Ten reasons to read God's word, to know where you're going, to have wisdom of knowledge of God's word, to find success, to live in purity, to obey God, to have joy, to grow in faith, to find deliverance, to have peace of God, and to distinguish good from evil. These are some pointers on why to read God's Word. A, a lot of people uh, find it hard to read God's Word, and I believe in the last days that uh, things are going to happen where people cannot, will, will not be able to read unless they have it in their heart. They're not going to know what to turn to. Amen. Amen. Um, it's been good, ladies. I'm, I'm so thankful for this study that we've had. So today, I want you to get into the Word of God, and I want you to trust in God, pray, seek His face daily. Until next time, walk in love and keep your faith. We'll see you soon. Encounters is sponsored by Vessels of Honor Worldwide, AAA Enterprises, and the viewers. If you would like to contact Encounters, email encounterswithgod at comcast.net or write to us at 117 Sunset Place, Portland, Tennessee, 37148. 